Hello, I'm Roy Thompson, author of Basic Signaling Principles and Associated Circuitry Presentation. The Basics of Railway Signaling is the first section of five. Sections two to five cover more technical and engineering subjects. But it's important to understand railway signalling from an operational view before moving on. I was lucky in that I spent my first years as a fireman on steam and second man on diesels before entering signal engineering department. I had no electrical knowledge. I had to teach myself basic electricity and magnetism. And when I started to apply this to signal engineering, it was made so much easier having an understanding of signalling from a train driver's view. Like all five sections, a video provides a classroom presentation of the subject, together with a workbook, which can be viewed as your course notes. The workbook also provides self-assessment questions and answers to check your progress, together with any pause for thought reading exercises. In addition to five videos and five ebooks, there is a bonus, which if you are not aware of, I'll explain later. So if you like what you've seen so far, please click the thumbs up and subscribe below. OK, let's look at the content for section 1. Starting with semaphore signals, we look at the main signals, stop and distance signals, showing both upper and lower quadrant, rapid transit, absolute block signalling, and here is an example of the video showing how the absolute block signalling system is operated. Let us look at a train being released into a section. We'll start from scratch. No trains in the section. Indicators at both boxes are at normal. The commutator at box B is set to normal. And the section signal at box A is locked. Box A wants to send a train into the section. The signaler at box A presses the bell plunger once. The signaler at box B hears one on the bell and presses the bell plunger once to confirm receiving. The signaler at box A then sends a bell code that describes the type of train that he wishes to send into the section. These codes vary, but let's say that he presses the bell push three times, short gap, then once more to send a code 31 to indicate that the train is a slow passenger train, in other words, a stopping train. The bell code is received at box B. And if the signal at box B wishes to allow this train into the section, then the bell push is repeated back to box A. The signal at box B will now turn the commutator to line clear. And the indicators at both box A and box B will turn to line clear. Notice also that the section signal at box A is now free. The important factor here is that the signal can only be released once. Once the signal has been cleared and returned to danger, then another line clear will be needed to free the section signal again. That will not happen until the train has been through the section and the section proved to be clear. The signal of box A can allow the train entrance to the section. As the train enters the section, the signal of box A presses the bell plunger twice to tell box B that the train is in section. Box B replies by pressing the bell plunger twice. Message received and turns the commutator to train online. The indicators at box A and B turn to train online and act as reminders to the signalers that the section is occupied. When the train has entered the section, the signaler at box A replaces the section signal to stop and it becomes locked until another line clear is given. Devices and apparatus at box B prevent another line clear being given until the train has passed the first stop signal and the overlap. When the train clears the section, 
the last wheels clear the overlap. The signaller at box B will put B2 signal to danger, then send a bell code to box A to advise that the train has cleared the section. Box A replies. Box B turns the commutator back to normal and the indicators at both boxes return to normal. Back to square one. There is a pause for thought exercise in the workbook to reinforce absolute block signalling. We then look at levers and nav positions, how points are operated mechanically and how diverging routes are signalled. Here is another section of the video describing mechanical interlocking. Mechanical interlocking. In the case of mechanical lever frames, interlocking means the locking of levers to ensure that unsafe or prohibited moves cannot be made. For example, if we look at the signals involved in the absolute block signaling section, it would be dangerous for lever number one controlling the distance signal to be released without levers 2, 3 and 4 being pulled to reverse first. Remember the distance signal off tells the driver that all associated stop signals are also off. The interlocking would therefore need to ensure levers 2, 3 and 4 were reversed before the release of lever number one. Once lever number one has been pulled to the reverse position, it locks levers two, three and four reverse. Number one lever must be returned back to normal before levers two, three and four can be normalized. Then it's back to the workbook to carry out a self-assessment test and there's answers there to check your progression. Moving on to colour light signalling, we cover multi-aspect signalling, three aspect signalling, four aspect signalling, route indications, automatic, controlled and semi-automatic signalling. Other types of signals such as position light shunt, and subsidiary signals, banner repeating signals. Finally, the automatic warning system is covered both in cab and on track equipment and operation. Back to the workbook to carry out another self-assessment test. That is the content covered in section one, one hour of video and 50 page of workbook. The other four sections cover signaling diagrams, sketches and plans, basic signaling and lighting circuitry, track circuits and points. Five e-books and five videos giving a firm foundation for learning railway signaling engineering for just £15 plus VAT. And then there is a bonus. You will also receive the e-book Assistant Tester Mod 5 for free which is downloadable when you purchase basic signaling principles and associated circuitry. To purchase basic signaling principles and associated circuitry presentation, click the link in the description box below. It is payable via Visa, Mastercard or PayPal and access is then immediate. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe below. And I hope to be in contact soon with more detail. Access to more information will also become available in Basic Signaling Principles and Associated Circuitry on Facebook and can be accessed via the link in the description box below.